Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. So for the year of 2017, my Thursday videos focus mainly on encasements. We started out with chatons and I showed you some different ways to encase chatons and then I started moving on to some different size rivalies. Well, I kind of decided to continue on with that, but the months of October, November, and December, I got a lot of questions from viewers and customers about brick stitch. For some reason, it repeatedly kept coming up about how to do increasing, how to do decreasing, what happens, you know, if like your last row you do is this long and then the next row comes up, you know, to like this short. So a lot of questions about that. So I said, well, this needs to be addressed. So that's what I'm going to try to do for you guys over the next few weeks is number one, I want to teach you brick stitch and how to do some increases and decreases. The second thing I want to show you is some great easy patterns that you'll be able to do for Valentine's Day. Now I know Christmas was just a few weeks ago, but you know we're on the train to the next thing which is going to be Valentine's Day and it's coming up in a very few short weeks. So for what I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be using size 11 Delicas. The Delicas work best for this project because it's going to give you your perfect rows like you need but you can use regular 11s but they're going to come out your piece is going to come out a little bit bigger and it may not line up like you want it to so just be aware of that so i'm going to be using a red and a white my red which is going to be the outline color is going to be called my color a my white which is going to be all of the filling color is going to be my color b you're going to need about one gram of each of those and to kind of give you an idea of what one gram is one gram is just a cap full from a tube of beads, okay? So that's about all you're going to need for your earrings. You're also going to need 12 size 15 seed beads. This is good. It's going to do the loop of the earring. And then you're going to need some ear hooks. Now, for this specific design, it's best to use a size 12 beading needle. And it's also good to use either one G-thread, or you can use a four six pound fire line. I would not go over a six pound fire line because if you do, what may happen is you may see the thread actually between your rows and you don't want that. So I'm gonna start my needle out with one yard of thread and we'll be able to get started. So go ahead and get all your stuff together and we'll start. All right, so these super cute little earrings right here is what I'm gonna show you today. They're not very big. They are only about, the component itself is less than one inch. It might actually be exactly one inch. Yep, so it's right at one inch here. So they're not very big. If you wanna make them longer, you could actually uh, you know, put some beads above them or whatever you want to do. But this is what I'm gonna show you today. The A that I'm gonna be using is the red here. And my red is this opaque red and I'm using DB791, but you could use any color. And again, my B is the white and the white I'm using is the opaque chalk white. My 15s I'm using are also in white. Now I just wanted to kind of go ahead and show you as well, what you're gonna be learning in this one is an increasing and a decreasing brick stitch. Now I've came up with two other easy quick patterns. This one does increasing and decreasing brick stitch and it doesn't have any little things that might trip you up like this smaller heart. And um, this one's called V for Valentine's Day. And then this one is, I think, um, Hearts, Heart Diamond or something to that effect. I can't remember. But again, this is just very incre easy increasing and decreasing that you can find on my website, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. So to get you started, let me go ahead and we're going to zoom in a little bit so it'll be a little easier for you to see. We're going to be starting out with our bottom rows here. So as you can see, this very bottom bead is a single bead, and then the next row is two beads. So we're actually going to start with those two beads as our first quote unquote row. I wanted to show you before we go any further on here, um, this is the word, I'm sorry, the picture graph for this specific earring. 
And if you look here, just like I was showing you here at the bottom, you have your two A's and then that single A. So this is what's really gonna help you here um, if you kind of get lost. We do have this um, whole pattern for sale. Um, it's eight pages and it's step by step by step on the increasing and decreasing on my website. So to get us started, we are gonna pick up two A's. I'm going to hold them in place pull the thread and you don't need much of a tail. I'm only gonna leave about three to four inches of a tail. And I'm gonna go up through just the very first bead again. So just the first one. Again, I'm gonna hold that in place, pull the thread. And what's gonna happen is those two beads should sit side by side. If they don't sit side by side, then make them sit side by side so that they look just like this. Now you're gonna take your needle and go down through the second bead that you added. And I'm gonna hold them in place as I pull the needle through. Now this is where we're gonna put our single bottom bead in. I'm gonna pick up one A and I'm gonna come up through the first A that I added. So when I pull through, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have my tail thread coming out of the bottom of that bead and my working thread coming out of the top. Now you can go ahead and reinforce this if you want by going ahead and coming down through your second bead through the bead you just added here we go and then up through that first bead one more time. So it looks just like this. So because I'm working the exact way that I started, this next row I'm gonna be working from left to right. Now you can flip it like this if you're left-handed and you can work from right to left. It's completely up to you because however you follow the pattern, it'll all work out the same. So this is completed now. So our next row is an A, a B, and an A. So we have three beads. So with brick stitch, you are paying attention to what we call the bridge. The bridge is simply the thread that connects the two beads. So we have one thread bridge for this row, and we're gonna do what's called increasing brick stitch. So I'm gonna pick up my A and my B, and let me Pull some down here so you can see. So I've got my A and my B. Now I'm gonna hold these threads tight and I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna go under the thread bridge. So I'm not going through a bead, I'm going under the thread. And I'm gonna pull that through. So this is technically my first increase because I'm adding two beads at the beginning of the row. Now I'm gonna go up through the B that I just added. So it's this bead right here where I'm coming out of. And I'm gonna pull that on through. And I'm gonna put my fingernail there and pull that thread straight up just like this. Now, we're ready to add the third bead for our row, which is gonna be this A. Now, the thing about it is, is you can't see a thread bridge. There's only the one. That's part of the increase. So this is like our second increase for the row is the way to think of it. So I'm gonna stick the needle under, whoop, sorry guys, under the same thread bridge that I just went under. So under that same single bridge there, and it, there's not like a perfect way to do it. You just jab the needle under the thread and then pull it on through. So I'm gonna pull that thread and what's gonna happen is you want that red bead to sit right next to the white one, and then you're gonna take your needle and go up through the bead you just added and pull that thread straight up like this. Now, when you pull that nice and tight, what that's gonna do is that's going to um, help to pull these rows together and look really good. So our next row, we just finished this one, so our next one is A, B, B, and A. So if you look, I have two thread bridges for this row. I have this one 
and this one. So I'm gonna do my increase. So I'm gonna pick up one A and one B. So at the beginning of every single row, whether you're increasing or decreasing, you're picking up your two beads. So I'm gonna go under the first thread bridge. I'm going to pull this thread and I'm gonna go up through the B that I just added, which is this white one. Pull this on through. Okay. Then I'm gonna pick up a B. I'm gonna go under the very next thread bridge, which is gonna be this thread right here. Pull this through and go up through the B that I just added. Now again, we still have one more A to add for the row, but alas, there is no little thread bridge out here. So we have to pick up our A, go under the same thread bridge that you just went under when you added this B, pull through, and then go up through the A that you just added. I'm gonna put my finger on it, pull this thread. I'll pull the thread straight up so that now that row is complete. Now as you work, if your thumb keeps bumping and hitting this little bead, no worries, because you can straighten it up at the end, so that's no problem. So that row is now complete. So we just finished this row here. Our next row is an A, three Bs, and an A. So one thing that may help you as well is you can go ahead and pick up your row on your needle and then very carefully slide it off so that you know in what order you're gonna pick up your beads without having to look. So again, I'm doing increasing brick stitch. I'm gonna pick up my A and my B. For this row, you can see I have one, two, three thread bridges. So I'm gonna take my needle under the first thread bridge, pull that thread and go up through my very next, that very bead that is right above where my thread is exiting. Okay, now I'm gonna work some regular brick stitch here. I'm gonna pick up a B, go under the next thread bridge, and then up through. And then another regular brick stitch, I'm gonna pick up a B, go under the thread bridge, and go through. Now, again, we're doing an increase row. So I'm picking up an A. I'm gonna go under the thread, under the last bead that I added there, pull this through, and then go up through the bead that I just added. So that now, this is what you have. So I'm gonna do one more row for you to show you the increasing. So we just completed this row here. So the next row is an A, one, two, three, four B, and an A. So again, I can take and I can pick up my beads the way that they're supposed to be on my row, and then I can just kind of lay them out just like that so I know exactly how my row needs to go without having to look at my graph. So I've got my A and my B. For this row, I have one, two, three, four thread bridges here. So I'm gonna go under that first thread bridge. Pull through, and I'm gonna go up through the B that I just added. Okay, my next one is a B, so I'm going under the next thread bridge, the very next one. And then through the B. Now this is just regular brick stitch. <laughs> But you don't want to pop your bead off just like I just did. Make sure you get under the thread bridge there. And that's a good lesson to show you what happens if your bead pops off. It just means you didn't get under the bridge. So just make sure that you get under that bridge as you pull. It's kind of a good thing when goof ups happen like that on video. So that way you can see what I did and you know what you might could do in your problems and all right, so I have my row almost finished. I have one last A that I need to put on. And again, you can see I don't have a bridge to go under. So I'm gonna have to take it. I'm gonna go under 
the thread bridge from the last bead that I just added, pull this on through, and I'm gonna go up through the bead. So that this is what you have so far. So let me zoom out just a little bit so I can kind of show you what you're gonna do at this point. So we just finished this row here. Now I'm gonna leave this on the screen for just a minute so that you can pause the video and be able to see what you're gonna do next. But you are gonna work the increasing peyote stitch for one, two, three, four, five more rows, okay? So one, two, three, four, five rows so that you're doing this widest row. You're gonna continue exactly like I just showed you. So again, I'm leaving it here on you for just a second so you can pause it and be able to either write down what, you know, what you're gonna pick up. So once you get to this point, this is what your piece will look like. And you can see here, that this is the widest point of our piece. Now we are gonna do what's called decreasing brick stitch. And we are gonna do this for two rows because you can see this row here completely changes up a little bit from these rows. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my beads and lay them out the way they're supposed to. So I'm gonna have to have, let me see here. I've got to have an A, two Bs, A, two Bs, A, two Bs, and an A. Okay, so this is my decreasing row. So I'm going to slide these off, and just like I did in the increasing, I'm going to start out with my first two beads, which are going to be that A and B. Now, instead of an in increasing brick stitch where we went under this first thread bridge, in decreasing, you're going to go under the second thread bridge. So you're going to skip the first one and go under the second. Pull this on through and just like in your increasing you're gonna go up through that B bead and pull it. Now if ever there was a term to use here you know my word to use is wonky because in decreasing peyote stitch or <laughs> brick stitch your first two beads are going to sit a little bit wonky. Now to fix those all you have to do is go down through the first bead, pull that through, and then up through the second bead and then pull this through. So you're not going under the thread bridge, you're just going through those two beads and it pops them into place. So this is your first decrease for the row because we skipped that first thread bridge. Now we're gonna continue um, the row with normal brick stitch, so I'm just gonna keep going here until I get to the end of my row. And this way you guys can see the difference. So I've got my A, 2B, A, and now we'll have 2B, okay, if I can get it here. Then we'll have our A. Two Bs. And then the last one for the row is an A. And you can see that we have all the beads added for our row now, and we did not have to do any sort of increases at the end. Okay, so that completely finish up our first row. So the thing we did different is in the decrease, we went under the second thread bridge, and then we don't add a bead here on the end. So I'm gonna show you this next row. 
and in this row, let's see, it is this one here. So we're going to be picking up 3A, 3B, and 3A. So again, we're going to do our decrease. So we're not going to go under the first bridge. We're going to go under the second bridge for decreasing. And then up through the bead right where my thread is exiting. Now again, this makes our two little beads wonky. So we're going to come down through the first one. Straight down. And then up through the next one and go straight up just like that. Okay, so another A, and this, and from this point, you're just going under the very next thread bridge just like you normally would. So then you've got three Bs here. And then we'll be doing three A's. All right, and again, you can see that third A is the last bead for my row, so there's no need to add any bead here on the end like we did in increasing. Now, this next row is a little bit different. You can see that instead of being kind of stair step like this, this row comes in quite a bit. So to get ready for that, we're coming out of this A, and we need to be coming out of this A. So to do that, all we're gonna do is come down through the very next A, working in the other direction. I'm gonna come down through that A, and then up through this A. All right, so I've got, an, I'm gonna pick up an A and a B, and I'm gonna work it almost like it's an increase row. I'm gonna go under the thread bridge it's going to be that first thread bridge, so going this direction. So it's the one that is connecting our A to our B. And I'm going to pull this through and go up through the B. Now I have to add three more Bs and then just working regular brick stitch. So one, two, three, so we'll have a total of four there, and then our last one is an A. So then we'll pick up our A and go under. So that now you can see we went in quite a bit, but it doesn't make a big difference in our pattern because of that fact that we were able to do a little increase here. So the next row is an increase and my beads that I'll be picking up, let me back this up just a little bit here so that you'll be able to see. Whoop. I'm gonna be picking up an A, two Bs, well, let's start over here. An A, two Bs, an A, two Bs, and an A. And again, this is an increase row here. So I'm gonna be picking up my A and my B. I'm going under this first thread bridge. Remember, this is increasing. So because we're increasing, those two beads are gonna sit straight and they're not going to be wonky. Okay. 
All right, so I'm putting on the B here, and you can see I don't have any more thread bridges, but I still have one bead I have to add. So I'm going to go under that same thread bridge that I went under to add this one here, and then I'm gonna go up through that bead. Okay, so now, this is the row we just completed. So now you can see we're gonna be doing a decrease row right here, and then this row is gonna be a little different like this row here. So I'm gonna do a decrease of my A, B, two A's, a B, and an A. So I'm gonna do the decrease row just as a quick refresher, the A and the B, and remember, instead of going under the first thread bridge, we go under the second one, pull through, going up through my B, and remember that those two beads are gonna sit wonky. So I'm gonna go down through the first one and up through the second one. Okay, now I've got <clears throat> two A's. then one B and one A. And remember, because this was a decrease row, we have that last little thread bridge there, so we don't have to add anything after that. So that's the great thing on the decrease row. So our little hearts are coming together, but we have to do this last little thing here. Now you can see I've got two A's here, then there's the space, and then I've got two A's. So how we do this is we're gonna pick up two A's, and I'm gonna treat it like a decrease. So I'm gonna go under the second thread bridge. So not the first one, but the second one. And I'm gonna go up through the bead right where my thread is exiting. Now remember, because it's a decrease, those beads are gonna sit wonky, so you have to go down through the first one and up through the second one. So that part of the heart is complete. Now, we need to be coming out of this bead right here and I need to be coming in an upward position. So to do that, I'm gonna come down through the A, that first A, and then through the A right below it. Then at that point, I'm gonna work like a up and down motion. I'm just gonna go up through the B, down through the A, up through the A, and make sure you pull these threads tightly so that, or your needle tightly so that the threads pop under these beads and no one sees that thread. And then that way I can come out of that first A again here over on this end. And now we're gonna pick up two A's and we're gonna work it like a decrease again. So I'm going to go under my second thread bridge. Again, those beads will sit wonky. So I'm gonna go down through my first bead and up through my second bead. Okay, so your two hearts are complete, but we need a way to connect them, and this is how I do it. You can do it completely different if you want to, but I'm gonna pick up six 15s, and then I'm coming out of this A. I'm gonna come through the next A on this row, and I'm gonna go down through that bead so that it makes a little loop. Now, you'll wanna reinforce this, so to do that, it's very easy, because basically, you'll just stitch through your beads to come back up out of that A, and then through those six beads again. This is not necessary, but it does help to secure, number one, your thread, and number two, the earring itself, because this is how it is going to hang. Now, if you want, you can hang a couple of jump rings off of this, 
and then hang your ear hook or like for me I just hang my ear hook straight from that it's completely up to you and what you like to do now I do not put any knots in this because anywhere you put a knot you're going to see it. So I just make sure to stitch through several beads to secure my thread. And believe me, you've went under, through the river, through the woods, everywhere with this thread. So it's not going to come apart. So all you want to do at this point is to take and either use your thread burner or your cutters and trim that thread. And you can see I probably have about 10 inches left. So then I'm going to put my needle on the other end and then at that point I'm just going to put it through the, the one bead and if that bead is sitting a little wonky or anything like that this is your time to fix it. But then I'm just going to stitch through some beads and then again I'm going to trim that thread so that you have your completed piece. At that point, it's just a matter of hanging your ear hook on that loop so that you will have your earrings. So it's a very simple, basic increasing and decreasing. So I hope you enjoyed learning these really simple heart earrings. I do apologize. I know it was a long video, but I really wanted to make sure that I drove home the points of increasing and decreasing and how to know the difference in the two when you're working on a piece. Now, the graph that I showed you today can be found um, on my website, which is off the beaded path beadstore.com, and it's called Increasing and Decreasing Brick Stitch, and this is the double heart earrings. Now, this is a seven or eight page pattern because it goes step by step just like I showed you in the video, okay? So this is not one of my basic graphs. This is a step by step. And I did that so you would have that idea. Now, I wanted to let you know really quickly that we have had a promotion going all week on our website, but I wanted to let you know about it so that way you can take part in it if you're interested. So today, this video comes out on January the 11th. And I, this will run until January 13th, 2018. So the patterns that I showed you today, the V for Valentine, and then this heart earring here, you can purchase this as a printed pattern or as a download on my website. But if you place a physical order, meaning we have to ship something to you this week, you will get this pattern which is the basic graph, how I showed you how we read this basic graph, you will get that free in your package just for placing the order. So just be aware of that. Now next week, I will be showing you another little heart kind of stacked earring that you can also make a really cute pendant for that again will be great for Valentine's Day. Just a few, one more little thing to let you know is that, um, you know, I'm going to Prague with Triple M Tours in December of this year. And the tour is almost completely booked. There are only a few spots left. So I'm going to have Sammy put the, um, the email or the, the website here so that way you can see it. So if you're interested, you can grab one of those last seats for the Prague trip. Now, just so you know, Triple M Tours is really great about doing a payment plan. So if you sign up early, you'll have plenty of time to make payments so that you can go to Prague because I've never been and I would love to experience it with you as well. So I hope that you have a wonderful week and have a great one and come back next week. Bye.